Northwestern. The past four years have been nothing short of amazing. Through the ups and downs, the memories we have made together are priceless. Playing at the next level has been something I've always dreamed of since I was a kid, and I am truly blessed to be in the position I am today. I will forever be grateful for the support you all have given me during my time in Evanston. This place is truly special. But I'm not done yet. Wildcat Nation, I'm back. I'm not sure I've seen a cooler return announcement put out by any athlete boo-booey of Northwestern, making everybody that wears purple very happy with that announcement. Boo, we'll get into your decision in a second, but what went into that video, man? That Twitter announcement was fire. Yeah, I appreciate that. You know, uh, that's just the Northwestern, uh, you know, media people doing their thing. Uh, you know, they kind of came up with the idea. We talked about it behind the scenes and. We just were able to shoot it, and it came out great. So super thankful for the, the Northwestern media and the staff. They were they were awesome with that video. Yeah, it did come out great. And to put your voice on it was awesome to make it personalized. I love it. And obviously, the big story behind it that you did decide after weighing a couple of different factors to come back for another year with the Wildcats. What ultimately was behind that decision for you? Uh, you know, ultimately, it's just, you know, Northwestern, was the place that when I was coming out of high school, uh, I said this in a previous interview, but, you know, they were the only team that was there and that believed in me and, and giving me a chance and just gave me a scholarship. And so, you know, with this past year and, and the success we had with, with the students and how just the environment that was in Welsh Ryan, you know, that was a huge, obviously a huge part in, in, in my decision. And then, but I just felt like I owed it to the university. I owed it to coach, you know, they believed in me since day one, and it was one more year, so I felt like I owed it to them. And I was going through the draft process, and I was getting a lot of feedback, some good feedback and uh, some negative feedback just as far as, like, statistics and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I was just thinking about this past year and how fun it was and, you know, how if I came back, how much better we could be and and have a chance to win a Big Ten title, so. You had so that, many amazing moments, Boo, during that year. You pointed out the students. I mean, it was packed on campus every single time that you guys were at home. You had some dramatic last-second wins, some great come-from-behind wins. What kind of stands out? I know it may be impossible to pick out one or two moments, but what kind of stands out to you from the outstanding season that you and the Cats had last year? Yeah, you know what stands out is just, uh, we were a team that prided ourselves on a lot of uh, toughness and just doing whatever it takes to win. And there was a stretch, I, I believe, after we played Iowa, we uh, or before we played Iowa, we had got a couple uh, COVID cases, and you know we had to take a week off. And you know everyone was thinking like, oh, they're gonna come out. You know they haven't played in a week, COVID. And even myself, I was thinking like, man, I really don't help this, like hope this sets us back or anything. And we were able to come off, off that break and win five in a row, you know, be the number one Purdue and top 15 Indiana back-to-back. -back. And then, you know, going on to win another one against Iowa. Uh, you know, so I think that at that point in the in the season, you know, when we, we came out of COVID uh, and just we came off that little COVID pause and, you know, we just persevered and we fought through adversity. And that's when I kind of knew, like, man, this team is special. Special enough to get to the NCAA tournament for just a second time in program history. And you back up getting there by winning a game against Boise State as well. Do you feel like, Boo, that with this second appearance and the way that you guys performed on the national stage, that maybe the national perception of Northwestern basketball has been altered a little bit? I mean, yeah, definitely. You know, we're definitely starting to get a little more attention, a little more recognition. And you know, that was kind of one of the things that was one of my goals when I first came in, talking to Coach. You know, the recruiting pitch was to, you know, come and rebuild. We were, I came in at a rebuilding stage, and I was going to – I wanted to be a part of, the, uh, of a team that was going to be the second time in program history. And I just wanted to change the narrative on Northwestern basketball. So, you know, it's glad to see that, you know, it's kind of starting to change based off this last season. And just coming back next year and, you know, continuing to do what we did this past year can I think can really stamp that so in terms of 
Boo, in terms of your maturity and the way that maybe your game changed and evolved, what were you most proud of regarding the jump or the different steps that you made from the previous season to last year? Uh, I get this question a lot. You know, I think the biggest thing is just my leadership. Uh, not not so much with my actions, just with my voice and, you know, just being there for guys on and off the court constantly and just letting letting my teammates know, like, I'm here for them. I want the best for them. And because I've been a guy who always, you know, when I was coming and playing, like, at a younger age, I would kind of just lead by example. I wouldn't really use my voice and stuff. But, you know, that stuff matters at this level. And, you know, when, when you have a bunch of coaches and they're super hard on you, you kind of need you kind of need a voice that's kind of motivating because, you know, the coaches are their jobs to get you better and, you know, kind of beat you down and be that adversity for when the game comes, you know. So I, my job is to keep everyone steady at a steady pace and just control, control the floor and control everybody's mental thoughts. You know, whether guys are making or missing shots, just control the tempo and, and just keep everybody level headed. How much of that, Boo, is simply a matter of being around for as long as you've been around and becoming a more mature, not just basketball player, but person? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, I, I've, I've done a lot of a lot of time here in Evanston and, uh, you know, I've played a lot of games. So, you know, the younger guys, they kind of look up to me and respect me as far as, you know, when it comes to leadership and the things I have to say, because they know I've been through things. They know I know things. So they do a great job of listening and, and they're and they're super fun to play with. You know, they'll do anything for me. I'll do anything for them. And, you know, those are the type of guys you want on your team and those type of guys you want in your life forever. And, all my teammates are going to be in my life for the rest of my life. So I'm just super thankful for them. And obviously anybody who has followed your career, who follows Northwestern basketball, knows that on that coaching staff that you talked about, your brother who had a terrific career himself inside the Big Ten, how much credit does Taylor deserve? And maybe you don't want to give Big Bro too much love, but how much credit does he deserve for kind of the growth of, uh, that you've made over the last year or two? No, yeah, you know, he definitely, he definitely deserves a lot Uh a lot of credit, you know, ever since I was about 14, you know, he's kind of one has been the one who's kind of taken over and been my mentor for, you know, my basketball career and the decisions and working me out and stuff like that. And then even uh, since he joined the Northwestern staff, you know, talking about that leadership role, you know, he just really holds me accountable and he doesn't allow me to make excuses and, you know, do certain things that are bad examples of leadership. So I think that's what's really helped push and uh, develop my leadership even faster. So definitely huge credit. You know, he's all, he's always on me, never lets anything slide as well as the other guys. And, you know, he's just a young and he knows he was a great player in the league. He knows the league. He knows how to play. And so he's just really good at, you know, motivating guys and getting guys better. It's interesting to hear that he can be hard on you. And you mentioned, obviously, this coaching staff, like most successful Division One programs, the staff can be hard on the guys sometimes. Because Coach Collins, you talk to him off the floor, and he's a, he's a soft-spoken, very easygoing guy. I imagine inside the arena, especially during practice, it's a slightly different vibe. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you, if you want to be good, you got to be disciplined. And I've, I've never been disciplined in a nice way, so... Uh, <laughs> It, it kind of makes sense if you really look at it, and like you said, you know, all all of those top top Division One programs that are that are winning programs, you know, they have super discipline and, and they're coached coach super hard. Doesn't mean they're not loved, but they're just coached super hard, and you got to be able to take it and realize the difference. And realize that sometimes with a group of guys or a group of people being motivated, there's competitiveness that turns into excellence but you've been dealing with that your whole life because as I started to do some research this is one thing I never knew about you that you and Taylor are part of a combined group of nine siblings I mean just how competitive how just plain crazy sometimes was it with that many siblings yeah you know it was it was super competitive you know we're still competitive to this day you know everybody wants to be the best sibling everybody wants to be the best child you know whether that's and being the most successful in life or, you know, being the most successful and, and just a hobby. Uh, we all have like that super competitive edge to us. And since there's a lot of us, you know, we're all competing for that number one spot. So it's just a lot of competition. So in the household, you know, there was a lot of comp a competition, but it, there was never really like envy or anything like that. It was always just, you know, pushing each other to try to be the best. 
I want to know how much of that still remains. For example, does, does a one-on-one -on -one game between you and Taylor ever just happen to materialize? And if so, who usually comes out on top? I mean, it, it has in the past a little bit, you know, when I was younger. Uh, and he would, he would beat me, but, you know, he was a little older and I was a little young at the time. But I would get him here and there. We probably haven't played in a really long time. But if we had... He would have. He would stand no chance. Well, he's an old man now, Boo. Come on. Yeah, he would stand no chance. He's and he's too small. I, you just take him to the rack over and over again. Yeah. Uh, listen, I know you want to have great team success again next year. For you individually, as you start to look at what next year is going to be like, where will your focus be on improving yourself? In the sense that whatever that improvement becomes, it benefits the team at the end of the day. I mean, yeah. Uh, so for me personally, obviously, I would love to. I would love to go. You know, uh, back to back, all first team honors. Uh, this time with the coaches' vote, and and also, uh, you know, even have a chance at winning a uh, Big Ten Player of the Year. But more importantly, it's it's not about me and my individual accolades. You know, I, over these past four years, you know, I just kind of go out and try to do what's best for the team and win as many games as possible. And you know, whatever accolades. Uh, come with that, come with that. And But my main goal is just winning winning as many games and putting my team in the right position to win those games. Are, are you the kind of guy who uses stuff like that as motivation? You pointed out, and this was inexplicable to me, that you were a media pick for all Big Ten first team, but second team by the coaches. I, I didn't really get it, but you mentioned it. Is that something that maybe you circle and you say, it? if I need a little bit of extra motivation on this particular night, maybe that's it? I mean... <laughs> No, no, not really. You know, I'm not. I'm not really too worried about what what uh you know the coaches or 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 the league thinks. The the media vote, I'll take that as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that that motivate me. Uh, you know, ever since I first started playing basketball, and, and those those motivations will continue no matter what I succeed, no matter what accolades I reach. Uh, that chip will always be on my shoulder. All right, boo. Before we let you go, we got to know what's on the table for you next couple of months before you get back to official practice and the NCAA allows you guys to get together as a team with all the coaches there. What's taking place in the next couple of months? You're getting yourself ready. Could you repeat that? Yeah. What's taking place for you the next couple of months as you're getting yourself ready before team practice officially gets back underway? Yeah. So right now, you know, uh, I just been working out a ton, uh, in the gym every day, just grinding, trying to get stronger, hitting the weights, uh, our summer session will start up in late June, so just we'll, we'll have about a two-week period where we get a little bit of time off, but, you know, still still be in the gym, working on the game, just developing. You know, this is the, this is the time where you, you, you really put on weight and you just continue to work on skill development because once the summer kind of comes, you, you kind of start getting into more team-based stuff and more team-oriented things and sets and schemes and stuff like that, so... If you want to develop anything new or add anything, anything to your game, you know, that, that window is kind of down, and so that's what I'm doing. He's always ready to get back in the gym, and Northwestern fans are really happy that next year that gym will once again be Welsh Ryan Arena. Boo Booey coming back for fifth season with the Wildcats. Hey, Boo, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on all the success that you and the Cats had last year. We really hope you guys are able to replicate it this coming season. Yep, thank you. I appreciate it.